So we'll continue uh, on the topic on the science data analysis, uh, and uh, I will talk about the uh, software, which is called Access, and also the other methods. And um, uh, Access is the software primarily developed for the biological samples uh, or the analyzing biological small angle scattering data. Uh, so the, there will be quite bio component in this presentation, but I think it would be also quite useful just to listen from the different perspective because some of these tools may be used directly to the other systems and also the I think overall methods uh, might be just interesting from the uh, from the sort of theoretical or methodological perspective. Um, so let's move on. Uh, with this. So what is the kind of the primary motivation of giving this talk? So uh, we'll be uh, using SASFI and already uh, some of you did. Uh, uh, we'll use it for the practical session tomorrow. Uh, but SASFI obviously doesn't cover everything that we need for the, for the small angle uh, scattering data analysis. So for example, there is the, uh, the concept of using uh, the uh, ab initial modeling of explaining the data. I will talk more about this later. Uh, so as there is uh, also possibility of using uh, some components building blocks that uh, uh, are assumed to be a rigid body blocks, but then they can, for example, freely move in the space. So therefore, uh, that, that's also not really covered with, uh, with SASFIA. Uh, and the, there are the, we discussed last time this size polydispersity, and I showed you very briefly how one can account for this in SASFIA, but uh, shape and conformational polydispersity is not covered there. So that's uh, something that uh, we'll also briefly mention today during this talk. Uh, and uh, SASVI has the possibility to calculate the intensity from the PDB file. PDB is the stands for the protein protein data bank, which is the archive of the uh, of the protein, mostly proteins, but also nucleic acids and the other uh, bio and non necessarily bio related molecules that are written in this format. Uh, and um, if you may remember from the previous presentation. Uh, one can calculate the uh, the intensity using this debate formula or the um, some variant of it, uh, and uh, this this is possible to be done with SASFI, but it's not uh, very efficient, and therefore there are other software tools uh, to be uh, to be used uh, uh, with this respect, uh, and also. Um, the molecular dynamic simulations. This is uh, something that it's. Um, beyond the scope of SASFU and uh, so the molecular dynamics obviously gives us tra trajectory but the other question is how to uh, analyze uh, the, uh, this with respect to the small angle scattering data for example if you want to fit some uh, dynamic system to this kind of data and the um, there is also uh, for example software for the inferring uh, the um, um, 3D uh, electron density directly from the small angle scattering data in order to represent also what the distribution of the um, of the sample looks like directly from the uh, from small angle scattering data and that's not covered and uh, many more of course this is just a short list but if you are interested in a kind of getting the uh, software uh, overview uh, for the small angle scattering uh, for the data analysis, but also for the process which is called the data reduction. This is the step when you get the, uh, the um, when you reduce detector data into this uh, I of Q um, curves. This software is very nicely uh, collected into 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 sort of one on the one web page uh, that it's uh, referred here, that it's run uh, by Adrian Rennie. Uh, so this, uh, this first uh, four uh, functionalities that are not uh, covered by SASFU are uh, 
uh, available from the software called Access that I will mostly talk about today. Molecular dynamics uh, and this uh, link to the small angle scattering is covered by something called SASI and, uh, and also others, but this is one of the examples. There's 3D particle electron densities from uh, small angle scattering data. There is a dedicated software called Dense. Uh, so if you are interested in these two other aspects rather than uh, access, then um, you can quite easily find them on web. Uh, right, so access, uh, that, uh, there have been a few versions of this software package. Currently is the version 3.0. Uh, and that's essentially collection of the different uh, programs. Now it's the over 90 uh, programs uh, that, uh, um, uh, that are available from this package and it's working with the uh, major operating software systems. Uh, and it's free for academic users uh, and you can download it uh, at this web page. Also, at this uh, web page, when you go to this download page, uh, you should uh, see the the link to the uh, to the documentation and the um, and other descriptions. There is a very uh, nice tutorial uh, given by Alex uh, Kinkley, if I pronounce his <laughs> last name correctly. Uh, and he is kind of running through all the uh, size functionality in 24 minutes, as he claims. Uh, it's uh, not uh, very elaborated when it comes to the different tools, but I mean, it can give you kind of overview what, uh, what um, is available from the software package. Uh, so what I will be doing, I will, will try uh, today at this presentation, I will try to go a little bit more into the details of these uh, different um, uh, software tools. So uh, the kind of overall overview of this uh, uh, access environment, uh, it's, it's presented here and we have uh, kind of three, four different steps that uh, can be uh, used in the, uh, in the data analysis. So we have uh, something which uh, in access is referred as a primary processing. That's essentially the uh, getting the uh, experimental uh, data and um, using different operations uh, uh, on them directly, like uh, averaging, subtracting uh, um, buffers, and um, and this uh, essentially the uh, basic processing steps in order to get the uh, what they call regularized or reduced data, uh, and then with the goal of sort of obtaining initial structural parameters like a radius of direction or or molecular mass. Then uh, there is the uh, whole repertoire of tools for the performing this ab initio modeling, also possibility of comparing it with the electron microscopy, uh, electron density maps. Uh, then there is the uh, there are tools for the for the rigid body modeling, uh, as I mentioned, and also accounting for this uh, polydispersity. Uh, by uh, different normal mode analysis and the and flexibility uh, and the and also there is uh, so there are some utilities for the kind of gluing the, all this together and I will go through this uh, different steps starting off from this uh, primary processing so the as I said the uh, kind of idea for this is that we have uh, um, data sets for the sample and buffer then we do this. Uh, averaging of frames uh, and the uh, and then subtract uh, uh, background uh, um, or buffer from the from the sample. Uh, what is then typically done is uh, uh, the um, we perform near analysis in order to uh, get this basic structural parameters, and I believe uh, Adrian uh, explained the near analysis to you. Uh, and one of the previous lectures, uh, and then yeah, then it depends a little bit on the uh, on the sample. One can do uh, some additional corrections uh, to the uh, to the data, 
but uh, generally speaking, the goal from this linear analysis is that we uh, have the uh, have a have an input data for the uh, for the next step, which here is stated this I, I, IFD, which is the um, inverse Fourier transform or indirect Fourier transform uh, that allows you to for the calculation of the per distance distribution function. Uh, which, on the other hand, can give information about the maximum dimensions of the sample. Uh, and I will also explain this uh, in more details later. Uh, so the and um, kind of the next step for this, particularly if you have the uh, structure available, then it's uh, comparing it with the experimental data. And there is a software called Chrysal or Chrysan for neutrons. And again, I will uh, talk more in details about it later. So this Guinea approximation uh, can be performed from this, uh, from this application called Primus. Uh, and you can see how the graphical uh, user interface looks for, for this. Um, so again, the, the kind of the goal is to get the uh, estimate of the RG uh, from here and uh, there are different plots uh, that uh, one can obtain. One can account for the different uh, shape of the particle. Uh, and um, it also gives you some information about the overall quality of the data. Then the, uh, the other parameter that we also want to extract from the, from the data early on is this uh, molecular weight uh, that, as I said, primarily important for the, for the biological samples. Uh, and uh, also, for example, gives you indication if you have the monodispers or the polydispers uh, sample. So if you have a mixture of the, let's say, monomers and dimers, so the, these are different, what we call oligomeric states that can co or coexist in the, in the sample, then molecular mass should um, give you an idea what, what uh, if, if you have a, for example, monomer, because then that would correspond to the, uh, to the sort of single molecular weight, or if you have the, uh, or if you have uh, more species in this. Uh, and there are, I think, four different methods that Primus uh, runs automatically for you. And then um, the one that it's um, um, presented here um, is referring to the something that it's using the Bayesian inference. And that's uh, kind of the um, using some prior information from the other structures in order to get the, uh, the estimate of the, uh, of the molecular weight. Uh, and also something which is called the uh, credibility uh, interval, which essentially gives you the error estimate of this mass. And uh, once we uh, are happy about the our initial estimation of the structural parameters, the next step is to do this P of R uh, inversion. That's the calculation of the uh, per distance distribution function. Uh, that uh, is the uh, function that corresponds to the um, uh, maximum dimension, or the, or we can learn from this function maximum dimension of the of the objects under investigation. But also the shape of this P of R differs depending on the on the objects that we measure, and uh, so therefore for the um, for the cylinder it would look different than for the sphere. Uh, and that's uh, the, the sort of basic principle behind this is that the intensity, scattering intensity can be explained uh, using this P of R. Uh, but then we uh, kind of have the uh, sort of uh, inverse relationship with the, uh, with the P of R. Uh, and therefore, if we, um, so we can calculate sort of back and forth. We can calculate the intensity from the P of R, but also P of R from the intensity. Uh, and, the, um, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is that it's sort of the calculation of the intensity is a check of the P of R 
I will show it in the next slide what I what I exactly mean. So the uh, there are essentially two methods that are sort of typically used for this. The one being developed by Glatter, the other by Moore. That's maybe not the most important thing, but uh, they uh, both of them take some parameters in order to uh, infer uh, the P of R function. So uh, SAS view, uh, it's uh, also using the, or enabling the P of R uh, calculation, and that's the uh, using the IFT uh, method developed by Moore, and the sort of the what uh, one and the, the way that it's calculated you. Uh, one um, takes the one assume that sort of the shape of the base functions, and based on this, uh, the, the the weighted sum of them uh, gives the estimate of the p of r, and then from 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 there with the sum coefficients, one can calculate this intensity, uh, and then this uh, this is minimized with some regularization term. So the uh, how that works in practice. So uh, we have this interface uh, in SAS that allows the that, that one needs to supply the number of these terms, the number of these base functions, and some uh, value for this regularization constant. Uh, and then the uh, one can um, generate the P of R function from. Uh, from from the data directly, I will uh, also try to live demo it after this slide. Actually, so just for the reference, the uh, ATSAS is kind of using conceptually something similar. It, it's also the uh, using the some estimate of the P of R with the uh, with the regularization uh, term or the regularization parameter. Um, and then it's here. So I mean, it's really like uh, in the details that uh, that that these methods differ. But the just to give you uh, some illustration of how does it work with this software called GNOME, which is used for the P of R calculation in SAS view. We uh, when when we have here the uh, the uh, the the prediction of the P of R and the fit to the, uh, to the uh, I of Q data, then uh, one can sort of by setting not, uh, uh, not, uh, um, not sufficiently large enough the Dmax and the, the shape that we get, it's uh, kind of um, quite bumpy here. And that's usually indication that uh, something it's been wrong with this function. So what you usually expect is this kind of smooth uh, decay at the high Q region, uh, and that's uh, that's usually something that you do by playing with the uh, with with the maximum uh, dimension value that in above methods uh, either SASV or GNOME has to be estimated. Or the input by user. That's that's what I mean. So just um, before moving to the ab initio models, let me just start off SAS view and the again. If you if you feel like, please uh, follow uh, this with me. So we also check if if you are well set up for the for the tomorrow session. Um, right, so you, if you have a SASV running, you should uh, see something like this. It will differ slightly on the, on your system. Uh, and now I see that I uh, have the, some other data running here uh, before. So you should be referring directly to the uh, test folders so sorry i will just very quickly go there where you should be also uh, be at right so i presume you should be seeing something like this now or maybe one level up but if you uh pick the um uh, for example this file 
which stands for the uh, for the sphere with the radius of uh, 80 angstrom. We what we can then do, we can go to this uh, inversion perspective, what we call in SAS view. So the D by default is the is the fitting, which is by far the most uh, commonly used functionality of SAS view. But then we can go to the inversion. And then we do the send to. And then as you can see, uh, our data file was loaded. And now we have this number of terms. And SASVIEW gives you the suggestions for this, what this uh, can be. Uh, let's go with this. To be honest, it's sometimes um, going a bit crazy about these values. So sometimes these are good values. Uh, Sometimes not, but it's usually quite easy to actually spot if there is any problem with this. So let's uh, calculate this for the uh, for the uh, for the sphere of the 140 um, angstrom and the, uh, uh, the maximum dimension. So uh, that's as I said, it's 80 angstrom the radius. So the so what we should expect as the maximum dimension is the is the 160 uh, right uh, angstrom. And so as you can see here, and it may be not the best illustration because that's been uh, quite uh, shrinked on the on the, uh, by using this screen. But uh, the uh, the again the kind of the you can see the bump and then kind of the rapid decay in the high Q region, or the, not the high Q, but it's actually on the D max region. Uh, and the, so what uh, I will do now, I will recalculate it for the actual value. And as you should be able to see the, uh, that it's been uh, decreasing here much more slowly, which uh, indicates that that's, that's uh, probably correct maximum dimension of the, of the objects that we are studying. So that's, uh, that's about such you. Uh, and now I'll come back to the to the discussion about the ab initio models. Right. Excuse me. Okay, so the uh, as I said the 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 other kind of important concept uh, for the for this access is to use this ab initio models. And what exactly do we mean here about the ab initio models? And I guess uh, for you coming from the uh, from the other uh, fields or the, or being familiar with the uh, with the other modeling, that that might be uh, that might be a little bit misleading term. But in principle, the uh, here the ab initio means to get the estimate of the volume directly from the experimental data of the volume that it's occupied by the molecule. So the uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the modeling from the first principle for first the physical chemical principles as for the some methods you may be more familiar with. So how does this ab initio models work? Uh, we, uh, first of all, have to choose the suitable range for the data that uh, it will be applicable for this, for this model. And then there is a, in this access package, a program called Chatham. Then we have this per uh, distance distribution function that can be calculating using GNOM. And that's the starting point for the uh, for generating this um, ab initio models, also sometimes uh, called as a as a dummy beat, and uh, the the way that it works, uh, we uh, start quite, I would say, aggressive simulated annealing procedure in order to get the feed to the data. Uh, and th then we get the ensemble of models, uh, and then in the next step. Uh, one cluster them together irrespectively to the data uh, and uh, then you select uh, kind of the one model that would explain the uh, experimental data best. Uh, and there are also some 
potential uh, statistical checks uh, for these models because um, I mean the one of the problem with this is that you really need to kind of have a good quality of data but also be careful in order not to overfit to the to the experimental data because the those models generated with the uh, with uh, uh, at this stage using the simulated annealing procedure, they are using quite a lot of parameters uh, and always fit well to the data, so to say. So one needs to be careful when uh, performing these calculations. And there are a few different uh, possibilities of generating these models. So uh, this. Um, the, there is a software called Caspor, or the, the, it's one of the programs in this access package called Caspor, that it's using the uh, representations of the uh, amino acid residues that proteins are typically built from. Uh, and uh, it's kind of using this concept of the dummy residues. Uh, and um, by this, uh, the 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 kind of the um, occupied volume can be modeled, but again, this is this has nothing to do with the actual uh, protein chain tracing. It's just the sort of collection of the dummy uh, dummy models, uh, dummy bits uh, that uh, that occupy space, uh, and the. Um, that's uh, the the it's it's using the kind of the same principle uh, with the simulated annealing and um, by finding these coordinates for the for the given number of dummy residues uh, and uh, for each of this there is uh, the we calculate this intensity that, that can be compared with the data and being input for the simulated annealing um, algorithm and uh, yeah again the the this bit corresponds to the different uh, amino acids so uh, one of these uh, is uh, so each of these 20 different amino acids it's represented by uh, by just a, a single sphere so that's the uh, very coarse grain representation of the protein that we have there is a variant of Gaspar, which is called Gaspar MX, uh, which uh, is used for the extension of the, uh, uh, used as an extension to, to model the uh, equilibrium of mixtures. So that's uh, along these lines of the polydispersity. When, for example, we have this uh, sample that, uh, that contains data for the equilibrium between the monomer and the tetramer, as it's uh, demonstrated here. Uh, and the uh, and the Gaspar MX is is using this, taking also uh, interconnectivity between these different parts of the oligomer into account. The um, the sort of next uh, variant of this uh, Abinicio. Uh, models is using this the concept of the dummy atoms that's uh, again not real atom but it's the placeholder uh, in the in, in the space um, and uh, that's uh, essentially the the something that we um, the, the this dummy atom is uh, allows us to calculate the scattering pattern uh, from uh, from it uh, and the, the it can be both applied to the to the solvent or particle. There are no uh, there is sort of no limit uh, on the on the number of these atoms. So like in previously we uh, with Gasbor we were modeling the exact number of the uh, of the amino amino acid residues in the protein because we know how many are them here. It's not really the case. It's uh, we let algorithm to freely sort of uh, the de, uh, derive the, the representation. Uh, so this is how it looks when it's uh, uh, at the beginning uh, of the simulated annealing. As you can see, we have essentially the uh, both the dummy uh, atoms for the solvent and particle, 
uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the blue curve is the experimental data that we want to fit to. The red one is the one calculated for the overall space. And uh, as you can see, the fit is not um, very good. So by running this simulated annealing, essentially the, the goal is that we want to get the uh, shape of the particle uh, with the respect to the solvent uh, at the same time fitting to the data. And the um, just on the kind of technical note about this, uh, this uh, software, which uh, by the way, it's called either Damin or Damif. Uh, there are slight variation between the two of these uh, that I will just uh, explain later. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the scattering intensity for this uh, dummy atoms is computed using the concept of the spherical harmonics, which is the simplified yet faster implementation of the, uh, of the, of the calculations. So by this one can calculate the scattering pattern efficiently. Uh, and there are some uh, penalties introduced in order to uh, make sure that the model is compact, it's not uh, too loose and disconnected. So, um, so there are a few terms uh, applied to the simulated annealing algorithm uh, to make sure that we uh, get the shape of the molecule as expected for the, for the biomolecules. There is also variant of this, uh, dummy uh, atom modeling software, which is particularly useful for uh, science data uh, because it allows the taking into account the conference variation, uh, which is the, uh, the uh, multi-phase uh, version of it, which is called MONSA. Uh, and um, essentially the, uh, it allows by using the different uh, curves from the different contrast to build this uh, uh, ab initio model by assuming that each of these particular uh, parts of the model um, are the same in the space. So they, uh, they don't move over the, the contrast variation experiment. So in, in this sense, we cannot account for the dynamics here. It's, uh, it's more for the static samples. Uh, nevertheless, it uh, can give the idea of the uh, of the composition of the uh, complex uh, that we uh, that we study using the contrast variation. So just to sum up, this uh, dummy or ab initio modeling uh, that's the, um, the there are three sort of main uh, programs to run this. The one is called dummy, as I said, dummy and Monza, uh, and the um, and uh, this dominant dummy works uh, for the single phase, uh, so it cannot be really applied for the, for example, for the contrast variation. While Monza can model up to the uh, model complexes up to four different components, uh, and the uh, they are all um, producing models which are of the low resolution, uh, and they have a different. Um, search uh, volume procedures. The constraints uh, are essentially the same applied to all of this. There is a difference with performance. Damif is uh, by no means fastest. Uh, but again, the results are not representing atomic models. It's just the field volume. Uh, and the um, just as uh, I've been referring to sounds, that's the uh, that's what can be applied uh, with the um, with the different packages. So Gaspar, it uh, doesn't really contain the form factors or atomic form factors for the for the sons. Therefore, it cannot be applied. And dummy and dummy, if, uh, when we have the case that uh, we uh, just want to model from the single uh, curve, uh, not contrast variation, in principle, can be applied. Uh, but also the, uh, the kind of it requires for the good data. So usually the SACS data is the, 
uh, is more appropriate uh, for the for this algorithm. And Monza, uh, in principle, can be applied for the Saxon Suns uh, with Suns with disadvantage of the conference variation. So just uh, to give you an idea of how this uh, in practice may work like, so this is the, the model for the RNA molecules that were uh, obtained using this damming. And as you can see, we can get the really like large library of, of these models. In the next step, uh, the, what one can do is use this, the, use the clustering techniques. One can obtain the sort of centroid and also the spread of this Eventually, what people typically do is they take this uh, obtained model and they compare with the uh, with the uh, with, with the existing um, uh, PDB structure, this atomic structure uh, available from the from the different experiment uh, crystallographic experiment. The um, as I said, the, the kind of important point here is that uh, you really need to have a good input data in order to run it uh, efficiently and uh, the uh, and not really modeling the noise. So it's very, very easy to kind of work in this concept of the garbage in, garbage out. So I really recommend to be careful whenever you run this application models. So we'll uh, change uh, topics a bit now. And I will talk about them uh, feeding high resolution or these atomistic models to SAS data. So the uh, kind of the main concept uh, for this feeding is, the, is to use this debate formula or this um, different variants of it using, for example, spherical harmonics. And uh, sort of on the, uh, on, the, on the atomic level, what we take into account is that the atomic scattering in vacuum, scattering from the excluded volume, but also the scattering from something which is called the hydration shell. So the obviously when the uh, molecules, particular proteins, when they are uh, measured by small angle scattering, they are not in a vacuum, they are in the solvent. And there is a certain interaction with the, uh, with whatever the uh, surrounds the uh, protein directly. And therefore it's important to take into account this hydrate, hydration shell. Uh, and there are particular two uh, programs from Access. There is the one it's called Chrysol, which is for calculating the uh, intensity uh, from the X-ray experiment and Chrysol from neutrons. So the kind of the overall goal of this is that uh, we can compare the atomistic structure, high resolution structure with the experimental data by uh, minimizing this term, essentially uh, the the, what Chrysol Chryson does, they take this atomic composition, they calculate the intensity using the, uh, the, the, the previous equation, and then they also optimize the scaling factor between the experimental data and the, um, and the, uh, and the calculated intensity. Uh, and then they uh, usually um, and report the the, the chi square uh, statistics, uh, which takes also into account the number of points that we use in this calculation. The next thing that is also uh, or the next functionality that is available from uh, SASView and it's also using high resolution models is this concept of the rigid and flexible modeling. And it essentially works like this: that if we have the, um, if we have, a, for example, two structures of two subunits, and we can uh, put them in the relative positions uh, between each other, uh, then by uh, rotating them with the different uh, degrees of freedom defined, for example, by this uh, Euler 
uh, angles for the rotation and the Cartesians for the for the translation. We can move around this uh, complex in order to fit to the data. And this can be done with the software called SASREF, which is also uh, particularly useful for the, uh, for the contrast variation uh, data that allows you to take uh, multiple curves uh, and sim simultaneously fit the complexes to, uh, to this data. So uh, by this, we can uh, get the um, overall uh, distribution of the, for example, different domains or the different protein complexes uh, fitted simultaneously to the data. But again, that requires the models of subunits. Uh, we need to know what is exact composition of this. Uh, but we are, can also introduce some extra ad additional constraints. So for example, if we know that the complex is symmetrical, we can account for this. Or if we know that there is a certain distance between the molecules, for example, from the cross-linking experiment, that this can be also introduced to the SASREF. The uh, requirement of the, uh, of the complete structure is alleviated with the uh, Mm, a program called Bunch, uh, which uh, combines this uh, SASREF concept with the uh, with the ab initio modeling. Uh, so what it allows is to 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 position uh, the domains uh, independently uh, um, between each other and the or with respect to each other. I should rather say. Uh, and the and model the uh, missing parts uh, using this uh, ab initio models. Uh, and again, uh, here we can use the uh, multiple experimental data sets for the simultaneous fit, simultaneous fitting to them. The uh, and uh, and in terms of the constraints, uh, there is a similar to to what can be done with SASREF. The kind of uh, ultimate um, combination of the of the different methods is to really use the uh, uh, bunch SASREF in order to build the complexes. So here we can uh, um, freely uh, model the different complexes and the um, into the large assemblies. Uh, by accounting for the parts that are uh, model ab initio and the uh, and uh, and having missing parts, uh, so that's uh, that's kind of the for the particular useful for building large uh, complexes. So that uh, brings me to the to the summary of ATSAS. So ATSAS is a, a powerful toolbox to analyze. Uh, small angle scattering data, primarily from biological macromolecules, but in, in principle uh, can be applied to the uh, to the different molecules too. Uh, dummy uh, models uh, or the ab initio modeling can be used uh, with uh, some uh, careful understanding of what the input data is and how much we can push it in terms of the obtaining the overall shape of the molecule. Uh, and there are different ways um, of the comparing uh, high resolution structures, atomic structure with the small angle scattering data um, by uh, either using them as a, as a building blocks or adding this uh, ab initio modeling parts to the flexible modeling. Uh, the kind of uh, the, 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 the big advantage of of using ATSAS is that it's uh, very user friendly and it's quite easy to get the result, but it's uh, always a bit of the danger here that, uh, that the answer not necessarily have to be correct. So uh, it's, uh, as I said, it's very powerful package, but one needs to be quite careful sometimes when using it. And that's it, what I wanted to present about access. Are there any questions?
that that doesn't really seem to be the case. Uh, how how do you feel like uh, before tomorrow's session? Or uh, does it uh, does SASPIO work for you? Have all you managed to to download it and start it up at least? I see some thumbs up, but not from everyone. So maybe um, maybe just very quickly, uh, uh, we'll tomorrow we'll have the session that uh, that um, that will be using this pan learning. So it's uh, also uh, both SASFI and the access to pan learning that will be required for the for the tomorrow sessions and. Um, and uh, we'll go through the pan learning stuff, uh, particularly in the morning, uh, which uh, for the for the section one and two. But in the afternoon, uh, if you also have already some data collected that you want to get a help with analyzing them, or you want to just basically discuss them, please feel free uh, to uh, to also bring them up. Uh, the um, other option is uh, to uh, to play a little bit with ATSAS. So if you are interested um, uh, in it, just please drop me a line. Uh, I can direct you to the to the installation uh, guide. You should uh, uh, you should be uh, able to to download it from without any problem by setting up account. Uh, and uh, there is a question in the chat, if it's all right to, to use the uh, SAGS data, that's, uh, that's totally fine. SASV is applicable to, uh, or can be used both for the SAGS and SANS data. Uh, and I presume that the, the, the problems that we'll be solving might be similar in SANS. So yes, please, uh, please uh, come up with, uh, with SAGS data too.